Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is Force and welcome to episode number two of our Darkest Dungeon No Torch playthrough in which we're trying to maximize profits and our heroes are going to be more or less disposable until we find a solid group uh, that we're really happy with. But when we get heroes that have really, really bad negative quirks or uh, ones that just are too stressed and we don't feel like spending money on healing them, We'll be, we'll be uh, prioritizing profits over lives. I know, it sounds terrible. We're just trying to maximize profits. I'm gonna be ideally looking for a crit-focused build, uh, and, and we'll get into that as sort of the, as the episodes go along. But for right now, let's just go ahead and venture out. Um, and we're gonna be going on a short mission right now. So for this mission, we will just be taking eight food, a uh, single shovel, a key, and I think that's basically it. Yeah, let's not spend any more money right now. Let's just keep it with that. See how far this group can get. Uh, we'll retreat if need be. And if we have heroes that are super stressed out, we're basically just going to discard them and, and look for new heroes uh, from our stagecoach. All righty. So let's take a quick look. And it doesn't really matter which way we go. Let's go ahead and travel north here at this point. So we've got a, you know, we've got a very, very strong front line, but again, um, a couple of things that are worth noting. Our heals aren't great. Uh, both of our Crusaders do have heals, but they're pretty weak heals, to be perfectly honest with you, uh, compared to the more dedicated healers in the Oculus Rift. <laughs> People did not like that in the last episode, but I find it pretty comical. All right, so we're going to be looking for people at the highest resistances. He is 30 across the board. 30... This guy's 30-20, and this guy's um, sort of balanced out. But overall, actually, I think I'll have him do most of the looting. Uh, that way, in case he gets any debuffs or anything like that, he's got the highest chance to resist them. All right, got a little fight here now against two Webbers. This shouldn't be much of a problem. I'm an inspiring tune to drop the stress of these heroes. And then we'll be swinging away with these other guys. Uh, as soon as it's their turn. Okay, so he can plop any one of these two. We also have the finish him, but that is uh, that is primarily used when someone is stunned. And actually, I'm not sure. The two Crusaders that we ended up getting, yes, we do have a stun, so we could actually set up for something like that uh, quite possibly. I think I should just finish this guy off, though, with this one. So there we go. And let's see, the Weber gets to go again. The Weber's got some decent speed there at three. And this guy's stunned, so we're not even going to be able to do a finisher move anyways. But we can, uh, oh, wow, missed the, missed the stun on that. The bounty hunter takes the stun. We can move him forward and potentially one shot, and we get it. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, now, uh, well, now that that's taken care of. Lots of crest, which is not, again, exactly what I'm looking for here, but... I'm not going to complain too, too much. So in, in case you missed the first episode, basically the concept uh, with this run that we're going for is we're not spending money on torches because we're going to go with a low torch, which will increase the loot that we get. And um, that is, that's our plan, essentially. Try to maximize the loot. Maximize the loot. He's got less accuracy and stress resist with highlight, but that actually doesn't matter because we're not running highlight, so... Not a big deal. So many crests, holy moly. All right, let's see what's in this room. Uh, there's nothing, we got a scouting, excellent. Couple, uh, there's a one trap right there, and that's gonna be an empty room and a fight right there. So let's see who's best at opening traps. That guy's zero, zero, 30, and this guy's 20. So this will be our trap opener, our bounty hunter. Come to the trap, yes. Disarm? No, he does not get the disarm, but he has the highest percentage chance to actually hit that, so he's the one we'll be attempting to disarm any traps that we come across. There's a portrait. And now we are full on dark, which means increased damage that we receive, increased stress, but we get the uh, plus to crits as well as the plus to looting. And we're about to walk into a battle here. Let's see what it is. Just two skeletons, no big deal. We'll take care of this pretty simply. There's a one shot from that guy. And let's see if we can get the stun on him. There we go. Beautiful. And why don't I take this opportunity to relieve some of their stress here? Because honestly, stress damage is worse than regular damage. 
in my opinion, because regular damage, uh, you'll restore your health once you go back, once you leave a dungeon and, and you go back to town, all your health is restored, but the stress damage carries on, so whenever you can relieve stress, either through campfires or from in combat abilities, um, that is nice if you want if you want to prolong the life of those particular heroes. Okay, there's a confession booth, which booth which has an opportunity to uh, that did, did the opposite. Uh, it's got a chance to lower your stress. Unfortunately, though, we ended up getting Ray stress there. And there's various interactables that you can use with certain things um, to actually make it more likely that you're not going to receive the the negative benefits from them. So we got a couple of archers in the background. Um, I would actually like to pull them forward. What is this? This is a pull two. So this should pull him to the front if it hits, which it does. So that's nice. Now we got him right to the front here. And we could go with a stun or we could go with a single target hit. I mean, overall, I'm not super thrilled with... This is a terrible uh, group makeup, basically. <laughs> it really is. We need a stronger back line and we need some more multi-target uh some more multi-targets. Uh, we got double stuns there, which is great. So that basically completely skips their turn there. And I can pull this guy closer as well if it connects. Uh, he resists the pull. Does do the damage, but he resists the pull. Let's lower some of their stress. Everyone chill out, listen to some good tunes. We'll be good, we'll be rocking. And um, I would like... We get 80% chance for 6 to 13. This could kill him. It does. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. The graveyard slash. Whoopsie. Uh, we could heal him up. Not going to bother with that yet, though. Uh, let's go 6 to 13 damage on the high end. It will kill him. 7 is not enough, though. And I could try for that pull once again. Let's see if we hit it this time. Beautiful. Okay, so these two guys, when they're further back, you got to worry about more damage. And I might actually, we're going to uh, push this guy forward. There, nice. He can't do... Um... The problem, though, is that we end up losing the Crusader here, but we can use this Distress Heal. And regular heal back here. But when you do that, you do, uh, you do the Crusader basically loses a lot of his ability. Uh, he's got very low stun resist, so let's pop this on him, see if we can get it. We do. And now that he's up here, we've got a massive amount of damage, or it's higher crit chance and everything, but then it's going to debuff him. Uh, I think we'll just do that, though, because if this lands... Ooh, boy, that was not worth the debuff. That did not hit enough. We didn't end up getting that crit. From back here, he can also do this, which is nice. But it's the Crusader being back here that we're not super keen on. And um, let's hit the stun for this. And I guess we can do some stress and healing. And now we should be able to take him out. That is not good. Stop missing, please. There we go, beautiful. Beautiful. He hath been smiteth. Yeah, let's move them forward. And we're going to switch you up. This is an unlocked strong box. But it is trapped. And we resist it. Wonderful. Let's go to the right, see if there's anything over here. Uh, we, I think we might be able... 90% of the room, we should be able to clear this. Not going to touch the arc. Oh gosh, no. What is his trait that makes him keep opening these? Gosh darn it, I just got claustrophobia. Obsessed with killing. Bears a crushing guilt of deeds. I don't know what makes him keep wanting to open those. Maybe just because he's a bounty hunter? Kind of funny. And some gold. Again, that's what, we're really what we're after here. We're really after gold. These are disposable heroes. Nothing doing. So we're going to make our way back. Whoopsie daisy. Make our way back here. So there's all sorts of different ways uh, you can approach this game. You know, I've, I see a lot of people, in fact, in, the, in uh, some of the prior videos I've put up here, I've seen a lot of people talk about, like, why are you losing characters? Why aren't you, you know, using, the, for example, the stall strat, which involves a lot of stunning and healing to keep characters alive? Uh, because the, the idea is that it costs a lot of money to keep those characters alive, whereas if you focus on a smaller group of characters and sort of specialize in them, 
and then just throw away the others, like have two strong groups that you specialize, level up and stuff, and then just throw away the others. Uh, that's gonna allow you to have enough money to purchase a lot of those really good trinkets that come in the shop and the store. And there's nothing else for us to do in this dungeon. We have completed, I guess we could still check this hallway. There's the possibility for treasure to be there. Uh, why don't I just do that? Because there's the possibility we might come across a fight or treasure in there. Uh, we will have... He is the best one, right? At 30? No, he's at 30%. He's a better chance to disarm this. There we go. Uh, there's a, Yeah, there's a chance there's going to be some stuff in this hallway because we haven't scouted that out. So we're just going to run on down and give it a look before we leave the dungeon. There's an Iron Maiden. Don't... Oh, gosh. He is so... He just... Does, he refuses to not open things <laughs> hungry we're good again we don't carry any of this stuff uh, with us to the next zone so all right that's that that is the dungeon 100 percent cleared let's go ahead and leave and collect our prize bunch of gold and a ton this is really this is the thing here though ton of heirlooms get ourselves some busts a crest, a bunch of crests, a portrait, and a couple of busts. This is really... The, 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 the upgrading the town is really, really a huge part of uh, what we're trying to do here as well. And uh, this is, that was a very quick dungeon. Let's go ahead and do another week, huh? So that's our week three. Let's go ahead and uh, move into week four. Now we've got the access to the blacksmith as well as the guild. So we're going to be upgrading primarily the guild, the blacksmith and um, the stagecoach, and then the nomad wagon once we have access to it, but not yet. So I can't get this yet. I still, I need some more scrolls. So we're gonna have scrolls available to us. Yeah, we've got a scroll mission right here. So we're, we could do the scroll mission and get uh, some, some scrolls, which will be really nice. I keep calling them scrolls, they're deeds. We could do this to get some deeds. Okay, so now we've got a, now we've got a lot of people available to us. So let's take a look at what sort of group we'd wanna build. Uh, front line, we are going to get, I like this one a lot, so we're going to toss him out at the front. He's got the multi-target hit with the Zealous Accusation, uh, Smite is some good damage against Undead, we've got the Bulwark of Faith, and the Battle Heal, don't really care too much about, but you know, it's there, we have it. Uh, try picking up, this guy's got the pull, which is good. I guess they both actually, yeah, they both actually have the same skills. But let's go with this. Uh, well, no, this guy, we can actually go with this guy, and we can just toss him later if we, if need be. So that's going to be our back row fighter. And we can also get, we want someone for spot number two. Um, he might actually be decent for spot two. He's got harvest um, as well as the, he's got harvest as well as the dirk stab. This could be a decent spot three. What about him, actually? Now, let's go with him for spot three. And for spot number two, it's either going to be him or one of our crusaders. Oh wait, this guy also has. Let's let's pick up a second crusader. Let's try this. Okay, so we're gonna try this group. Uh, this is another short dungeon, which means we're gonna go with eight, one. So gold. Remember, gold is what we're trying to max out here. And let me actually take some extra provisions as well. These ones are cheaper. Uh, these can be used to basically cure certain curios and allow you to open them up without any negative benefits. So as I start to get more gold and I have, I feel like I have uh, more breathing room for disposable income, then I will start to get additional things which will subsequently allow me to get even more gold. So we've got a healer in our Oculus Rift and um, here's a great example. Right now with this, let's check our openers by the way. For, this guy's 40 across the board, so he should probably be our opener. Ooh, I don't know, this one's actually 40, 50, 50, 50. So let's have him do the opening. And um, this is a great example. With this spider web, you can use bandages, which means you won't get any negative benefit from it because it protects your hands. So you can open up guaranteed without having, uh, without worrying about the drawback, essentially. Time for a fight. All right, and they are surprised, which means we get the one up on them. Uh, the pull doesn't do anything for us here, so we're just gonna smack someone in the face. 
These guys have uh, pretty low health, but they've got incredibly high dodge. Well, luckily, we get some hits there, though. And we're going to go with another one. So that's two kills right out the gate. And with this guy, uh, let's just toss a heal on our one injured guy. He hits the bleed, but he heals up for six, so it's it's fine. Not a big deal. Uh, a lot of these characters have pretty high bleed resist, which is why I like the Occultist. To be honest, it's so it can be so very strong, and we're going to go with the... Oh, there's the dodge. So yeah, it's not that easy to hit them, unfortunately. We can go with some single target smackaroos now. And uh, we can go with the stun. Let's try to stun him. His stun resist isn't that high at 25%. Toss down another heal. He resists the bleed and heals up. So now he's, he's rocking. Stun gets applied. Finish him off there. Oh, this group is off to a fantastic start, I would say. Okay, this is an heirloom chest. You can use a key on an heirloom chest to open secret compartments. Key unlocks hidden compartments. So you get more from a chest. Uh, or, of course, you can just save it and, and try to use it on a lock chest. But if you don't come across any lock chest, uh, then it's obviously better that you used it on an heirloom chest. Uh, this this skirmish requires me to complete 100% of rooms, so we're going to go right first. Uh, I forget what you can use on these. I think you can use the medicinal herbs? No, shucks. Well, let's just try to open it then. Okay, all right, and there's a trap here, and our trap opener at 40% will be our bounty hunter. Yep, indeed. Good for you, bounty hunter. And was it bandages for this? Damn it all the hell. <laughs> oh, well, whatever, we got some more gold. I, I gotta check up, I gotta learn. I, it's so funny, I've played this game for over 20 hours now, and there's still there's still some interactions and stuff that I'm not absolutely positive about. I just need to do, I just need to do some research. I need to go check like Reddit threads and stuff. All right, the annoying thing about these guys is they replicate themselves. So we wanna try to kill them ASAP and not allow them to do that. The slime hits are, are harder hits, but at least they're not replications, so. Would love to get some crits here, but it's not happening. We need the we need our light to go down a little bit more, so we get some more uh, some better critting. Let's heal him up. Gets healed for five. Resist the bleed. That's so good. Oh, it's so good. Oh, we got another heal too. Let's do it again. Heal. Same thing. <laughs> Resist the bleed and heal for five. Oh boy. All right. Smack this guy. Finish him off. Thank you. And we're gonna do some single target hits. It's an 80% chance. There's the dodge. What are you doing? 80%, thank you. I say 80%, you need to do this, please. This expedition at Wait, what? Was a oh, because of the scout? It counts as clearing those rooms uh, since we got, essentially since we got vision of them. But I'm gonna keep going. Again, we're here for the treasure. So we're gonna keep on moving. We got a fight coming up too. So we will do that. There it is. Now these guys are pretty easy typically. Uh, because they've got like no dodge and very low health, it's just a matter of if they get the opportunity to chain attacks, then it can be very obnoxious. But I don't know if we're gonna afford them that opportunity. Looks like that's a no. Yeah, destroyed. And um, don't wanna use my shovel. We're just gonna go back. We're right next to the entrance anyways. Uh, walking backwards, I believe, gives you increased stress, which I don't like. But if we can get in here quickly. There we go. So we only took one hit to that. All right, so we're going to go ahead and go right now. Uh, you can, As you can see, we've got a couple of fights and a couple more treasures, which even though I'm technically done this dungeon, we can still make benefit of that with our lower torchlight to get a bunch more loot. And some more money... Because right now, we don't have a ton. We want a lot more than we have. I mean, ideally on these runs, I'm looking to get like four to 5,000 at least. That's, that's, what we, that's what we try for anyways. Old tree. Oh, nice. Got some deeds in there, which we really need the deeds. And here's a little fight. Couple of Webbers. 
This should be fairly easy. They do have high dodge, but they have very low health, so if you hit them, they're done. If you hit them, they're done -zo. Just like that. Look at that. Two smacks. That's all it took. A trifling victory. Take the gold. But a victory nonetheless. And next wing. And there could potentially be a fight up here, too. All right. Uh, the corpses. I think you can use the herbs. Damn it. Maybe it was the holy water? Nope. That's not it either. I could have sworn it was one of those two. Once more. <laughs> Gotta figure out those interactions. Because they're not they're not spelled out for you in games, so it's just a matter of looking them up and or just trial and error. They get they hit surprise, so we're gonna get a free round with all of our characters here. And that's all it took. These nightmarish creatures can be felled. They can another be backpack here with some loot. Excellent. Trinkets and baubles. Got some food, although we don't really need it. And let's see if there's anything in this last room. There is not, but we've got some treasure and one more fight to go. Let's see who this fight's against. Couple of these little twerps. Couple of these little twerps. Let's smack him out of the park here. Oh no, they get some rounds first. Hey, look at their, they got speed of five. That's pretty nice. I even, even plopped a stun on that guy. But it doesn't matter. They're done for. All right, and that is that dungeon. That is everything now. I mean, we can go through this, but there's nothing really. See, so for the uh, blockades, like this thorny thicket, if you have an item in your, in your inventory that can pass through it, it will show up in the middle. I'm wondering if it just because it's early access, that that's why it's not happening for other stuff, uh, like the trial and error things that we were doing. Or it could just be that they, they want you to guess. So we got a little over 6,000 gold on this run, and I believe we spent in the vicinity of 1,000. So this is this is exactly what I'm trying to do here. And when we get out of here, we want to try to make sure that we're not spending a bunch of money on recouping heroes that we don't want to keep permanently. Um, so if there are some heroes that I feel like I'm going to want in my, in my permanent roster, so we will have like an A team and a B team, so like, you know, two, two, uh, we'll have uh, like our A team taking up these top four slots, whatever I wanted them to be, and then the B team right underneath that. And then everyone under those eight going forward will be completely disposable. I will never heal them up, nothing. And just, just to essentially save the money. So here's the sanitarium. This is to cure, uh, cure any negative effects on any of the heroes that we do want to keep around. And I've been getting pretty bad luck with this stagecoach, but luckily we're going to be able to upgrade now. So we get an extra, we're going to get a fifth one every week now. And if we get 10 more deeds, we could work our way up to getting a sixth one, six hero uh, every time we come back to town. All right, well, that's going to do it here for this uh, episode. We ended up going through two weeks. Hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned as we continue our No Torch money-making run. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good afternoon. I'll see you later.